So I want to welcome you all to part number two of the Holy Spirit series that we started last week. So if you guys have not watched part number one, don't miss it. It's right there on my YouTube channel. So go watch part one. And here we are in part two. All right. So uh, today we will be specifically talking about why the Holy Spirit. Okay, why is the Holy Spirit so important for the bride of Christ, especially if you are a born again believer, not just for the church, not just for the born again believer, but also for those who are new believers and also for those who are yet to be believers. Yes, I'm talking about the world. Yeah, yet to be believers, right? But it's so strange how there is still a large percentage of the church itself who doesn't want to do anything with the Holy Spirit. Like they just don't want his presence. All right. And today we will see from scripture why the Holy Spirit is so vital and so important, especially if you're not dead and you are alive on the face of this earth. Come on. You need the governor who is the Holy Spirit. All right. So let's see that from scripture today. So let's go to Genesis chapter one, verse 26. You know, we're going to start straight from the beginning. All right. So in our previous video, we saw that Holy Spirit is the power of God who takes the word of God and brings it to physical manifestation. Amen. So that's why we saw, you know, when God, after God formed the earth, he said, let there be light. In verse number three of Genesis one, he said, let there be light. And there was light. But before he said, let there be light, we saw the Holy Spirit was hovering upon the face of the deep. So when Elohim said, let there be light. Holy Spirit took the words of Elohim and brought it to physical manifestation. Amen. Holy Spirit is the power of God, my friends. So in the same way, my friends, when we see in Genesis 1 26, we see God said, let us make man out of our own image and likeness. Right. And then it says God made man. But when we come to Genesis chapter two, it says God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Amen. So in Genesis 1, 26, God made the spirit of mankind. Amen. He made our spirit man. And if you notice, there's something profound. God did not speak to the human body in Genesis two, but instead God spoke to the spirit man in Genesis one. Amen. God told the spirit man to have dominion over the fish of the sea, the cattle of the ground, the birds of the air and everything that creeps upon the earth have dominion. And he even said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Amen. He said all these words to the spirit man and not to the human body in verse two. I mean, in chapter two. Amen. And so I want to bring your attention to the role of the Holy Spirit in this. Like I said, he takes the word of Elohim. So this is what happened. And this is how the Holy Spirit showed it to me. It's so powerful because when God spoke to the spirit man of Adam and Eve, amen, the Holy Spirit was there. Okay. And he took the words of God. When God said, have dominion, when God said, be fruitful and multiply and all of that, Holy Spirit took that word and he saturated the spirit man. Amen. So that the spirit man in the physical man can accomplish all that God told him to accomplish. Amen. Like I said, he's the power of God that brings to pass the word of God. Amen. So when God said to the spirit man to have dominion, Holy Spirit took that word and he saturated. It's like he jumped into the pool of the spirit of mankind. Amen. And he saturated the spirit of mankind. Then in Genesis 2, The word of God says God breathed the breath of God into the nostrils of man and the man became a living soul. If you look at Job 32, 8, we see that the breath of God is the Holy Spirit. It's there in Job 32, 8. You can see that. And so what was happening is when God breathed into the mankind, the Holy Spirit who saturated the spirit of mankind came inside the body of Adam and Adam became a living soul. Amen. It is so amazing, my friend. So Adam and Eve was filled in the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And if you will notice that when God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, come on, Adam and Eve didn't have to do a PhD in Eden management. They didn't know they didn't have to study how to manage Eden. But the word of God says that they knew Eden in and out. Amen. Like they knew the different roots the secret spots in Eden. They knew where each and every fruit was on which tree 
And they even knew that they had to go and name animals. In other words, my friends, Adam and Eve were doing what God told them to do, which is take dominion to be fruitful and multiply, to replenish the earth. They were doing that, not because they had a course on it. No, because the Holy Spirit was functioning in them. Amen. Like I said, he took God's words and he was bringing it to physical manifestation through Adam and Eve. Amen. That's why they didn't have to learn how to manage Eden. They just knew it and they were doing it. Amen. But when we come to Genesis 3, we see Eve being tempted by Satan. And even there, you can see the role of the Holy Spirit. Because when Satan asks Eve, did God really tell you not to eat of this fruit? And if you notice Eve, he, she quotes God Almighty. That's because Eve is speaking in the spirit. Eve says, yes, God said, if you will touch this fruit or eat of this fruit, you will die. Eve said, God said. In other words, Eve was speaking in the spirit. And how do I know that? Because the word of God says in John 14, 26, that the spirit of the Lord will remind you every word that came from the mouth of God. Amen. So Eve was being reminded of what God had told them. Don't touch or even eat of that fruit. And she was quoting God. But we see how Eve begins to commune with the Satan. We see that. We see how she stands there and she keeps conversing with Satan. And so what Eve was really doing is she was denying the Holy Spirit. Yes, she spoke in the spirit. But after that, she kept listening to the voice of the enemy. That's why the word says that she was convinced. Come on, let me ask you a question. Do you think the Holy Spirit was quiet when she was going through that temptation? No, but it's just that she denied. That's why the word says do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not quench him. And Eve was quenching the Holy Spirit because of which she was convinced and she ate of that fruit. And this is what I believe. It's not given, but this is what I believe that when Eve ate of the fruit, the Spirit of God left Eve. And then she took the fruit to Adam and she convinced Adam to eat of the fruit. I bet the Holy Spirit convicted Adam also not to eat of the fruit, but she convinced him. And so the moment Adam and Eve ate the fruit, the Holy Spirit left them. Because I told you in the previous video that the Holy Spirit will not rest upon something unholy or will not stay or dwell in something unholy. That's why the word says, for my spirit shall not strive with mankind. Why? Because they became unholy, disobedient. And that's why we see they were banished out of the garden. And do you notice that after they were banished out of the garden, Mankind started to build his own empires on the face of the earth. And you know something? In, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve didn't have to learn how to manage the garden. They just knew it because they were being led by the spirit. But the moment they were banished out of the garden, people started to study. People started to research upon the earth. People started to do PhDs. You know, I know a lot of us, we consider education so important. We want to send our kids to school, high school, send them abroad for the best of the best colleges. But do you know all of this is an effect of the fall? <laughs> I'm not saying don't go and study, but it's all an effect of the fall. Because in Eden, Adam and Eve knew everything. That's why the word of God says, you know everything. Yeah. And because they were banished and they lost the Holy Spirit, mankind had to learn the earth. They had to learn, okay, these are the principles I must apply, then I'll get this produce, you know. So they started doing PhDs, they started doing all the researching and man, all of that came about. And that's why we see in Genesis chapter 11, you know, Nimrod and his people building the Tower of Babel, they said, okay, you know what, let's use our engineering skills. Let's use the intellect that we acquired and let's build this tower so that it can reach up to God. And, and you know, God touched it, that tower fell down. Amen. Why? Because that was not the intention of God. Mankind started to do their own thing without God. Amen. And do you know something? Mankind started to toil and toil and work so hard. That's why we have quotes like hard work is the key to success. And, and you know, you can't earn anything without the sweat, uh, all of that kind of stuff. You know, mankind started to sweat it out. They started to toil. They started to work so hard. They started to struggle for increase, struggle for promotions. That's why a lot of us, we struggle for these things. But do you know, in the Garden of Eden, none of this was there. 
Why? Because they had the Holy Spirit. They had the manager of the kingdom, man. But they lost him. But do you know something? Our God is a merciful God. He's not sitting on his throne with a bucket of popcorn watching mankind suffer. And he's not laughing. He's not watching Netflix or, you know, Netflix Earth version. No, he's not watching. And he's not enjoying that. No, the word of God says that he can relate to our infirmities. Jesus was tempted in all manner that he might relate to us and understand us. That's why when the people of Israel cried out unto the Lord. See, the thing is, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Amen. He will not step in into your life unless you invite him. That's why the word says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you will open the door, I will come in and dine with you. If not, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to keep knocking. Amen. So that's why when the people of Israel cried out and said, God, we need you. We can't do things on our own. You know, you know, this is the way I see it. You know, it's a really fun picture. Just imagine, you know, uh, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are there up in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is like waiting to get back into his original temple. Amen. He's waiting. But, you know, everything is unholy. And so God, the father finally hears the cry of the Israelites and God, the father looks at Jesus and he says, son, it's time. You know, probably they do a fist pump and then the Holy Spirit is like, "Okay, Jesus, let's go. Let's go. Come on. And then Jesus is like, all right, let's go. And I just I just feel like the, the spirit of God just just engulfed Jesus and just wrapped him up as a seed and placed him in the womb of Mary. That's why the word of God says the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. Amen. And she gave birth to Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Holy Spirit was like waiting. He was waiting to get back into the temple. So praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who took all of our pain, all of our suffering, all our uncleanness upon himself died a gruesome death, but rose again from the dead, making us holy and clean once again. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, that we are made holy and righteous once again by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And guess what happened? After Jesus returned, after raising up from the dead, he met the disciples. And the first thing he did is he breathed upon them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, The purpose of Jesus accomplished, amen, to restore the Holy Spirit back to its temple. Amen, my friends, today, me and you, we are the temple and the Holy Spirit. And guess what? Holy Spirit has been restored back to us. Come on, we don't have to sweat it out. We don't have to toil. We don't have to struggle upon the face of this earth. We don't have to figure things out. But me and you, the word of God says we will have favor in the sight of God, in the sight of man. Like we will just know what to do because the governor who knows how to run this earth lives inside of us. Amen. This is so powerful, my friends. I hope you get it and the spirit will reveal it to you because he's back inside of us. Today, if you're born again, if you believe that Jesus Christ is, you know, the son of the living God, the Holy Spirit has come in. And you don't have to worry about your future. You don't have to worry about which degree to take and how many degrees to take. No, you don't need all of that, man. Because the spirit of God is in you. The kingdom of God has come inside of you. Oh, righteousness, peace and joy is your portion in Jesus name. Amen. This is who you serve, my friends. And so I want to encourage you in this message to get up on your feet. Get up on your feet and feet, feet and look at the situation in the eye and say, I've got the Holy Spirit back in me. Hallelujah. So I want to thank you all for listening patiently and stay tuned for part number three. Part number three is going to be Jesus Unlimited. All right. So we're going to learn from the life of Jesus, you know, how the Holy Spirit was instrumental in the life of Jesus. And I call it Holy Spirit, Jesus Unlimited. Yeah. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that power packed message regarding the Holy Spirit. So don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends into groups and families. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you can receive further notifications of the videos that we upload. Friends, I want to tell you some songs are coming up, some amazing songs. Me and my friends worked on it and some other covers as well are coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and share these videos around. Let's take the nation for Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.